Hi, I'm John Terzak, and today I'm going to answer the delicious question of how to make bouillabaisse. Now, there's going to be a lot of people that say, well, it's made this way, it's made that way, it's made this way. Well, let me start off by saying that bouillabaisse Marseille, which is the uh, recorded, historical, traditional, original bouillabaisse out of Marseille, even at my, at my, in Marseille and around Marseille, there were seven or eight, nine different versions of it in the little towns around Marseille, right after it became known and popular and people were eating it and talking about it. So since that time, throughout all of, all of France, particularly in Paris, there's so many different kinds of Parisian bouillabaisses now. And um, I'd say every region in France has got a half a dozen versions of bouillabaisse going on. And then when you get over to the U.S., there's another hundred versions over here. This has a few of the primary components that I think need to be in it, which is orange rind, saffron, fennel, whether it's fennel seeds or fresh fennel, or even a splash of Perrineau to give it that anisette type flavor, um, garlic, tomato, and uh, olive oil. Those ingredients are, need to be part of a bouillabaisse, and they are going to be part of this one. We have mussels, clams, big cherry stones. I want some real clams in my bouillabaisse. I've got some decent looking sea scallops, some shrimp, a little bit of catfish, some salmon, and a little bit of lobster. And this is going to be our fish that we're going to use. So I got a hot pan back here. Let's start out by putting a little bit of olive oil in it. I got about quarter a cup of oil in there. And I'm going to put a little bit of celery, carrots, and onions in there. I want a little bit more food in my bouillabaisse. And I got enough in there right there. So it's a little more than a cup. And I'm going to put the fennel seeds in there now too. And that's, you don't want to over, over fennel it. The trick here is that the orange, the saffron, and the fennel are subtly there to taste. If either one of those start overpowering soup, I don't think it's that good. So you want to be careful how much of each one of those you use. So let's put a few threads of saffron in there. And let's put a little bit of dried thyme in there. Not much, half a teaspoon. I'm making one individual main dish order in this lesson. Let's take a little bit of the uh, fresh cilantro and basil. Let's put some of that in there. I've got this on high delivery back there, so temperature-wise. I'm going to put, I got, I got two medium-sized fresh tomatoes here. I'm going to put that in there. And I'm going to zest about half of this orange right into the pot now. So I don't want this to be orange bouillabaisse. I want to have a little flavor of some orange in there. That would be keeping with the tradition of the origin of this soup. Okay, I got about half of the orange zested in there. And I have a little combination of some chicken stock here mixed with about oh, half a cup of tomato juice. And I'm going to put a little bit of fresh pepper in here. And now we're going to hit it with the garlic. Got some nice fresh garlic. And let's go a couple tablespoons of the garlic. Let's give that a mix. I don't want any burnt garlic in there, so I'm putting the garlic in just near the end of the sautéing part. Now I'm going to hit this with about a cup of white wine, dry white wine. And we're going to let that reduce a little bit. And then when it gets reduced, then we're going to put the uh, 
chicken tomato juice mixture that I made here in there with the fish. Put a lid on it, crank the fire up on it, start to finish, 15 minutes tops. The whole bouillon base is done. Um, I'll be back in about two or three minutes when the wine gets through reducing and then we'll take it to the next step. Okay, it's been about three or four minutes. Wine is reduced enough. I've reduced it by about half. Let me just give you a look-see of what we got here. We got this nice mixture of the herbs and all those nice little flavors in there. And I'm going to take a little bit of this. We got a little bit of chicken stock here with a little bit of tomato juice. That's that's all I need. Remember, this is one meal. I'm going to throw a little butter in here just for fun because I love doing it. And let's put the shellfish on the bottom of the pot first. Now some people would say, well don't put it all in at once. Put the stuff in it takes this long to make and this long to cook. These are pretty close to being the same amount of time. Those clams, I'm putting in the uh, catfish and the salmon and the lobster and the shrimp and the scallops. This is a whole nice meal here. And let's get this on the fire with the lid. And when that fish is cooked, I'm going to come back, tell you how long it took, and we're going to put it in a bowl and garnish it, and you're going to have yourself a nice, easy, delicious bouillabaisse. A real one, too. It's been 10 minutes, or slightly less. I just shut it off, and I'm going to bring it over here, give you a quick look inside that pot, then we're going to get that pot into that bowl right now. So let's take, we want to make sure we don't bust up any pieces of fish in here. But we still don't want to be taking forever to do this. Unless you have nothing better to do that's different, I guess, you know? Well, now that I think about it, what could be better to do than this? You know? Let's get all that fish in there. Let's get all that in there. Oh boy, this is looking good to get that lobster tail in there. All right, we've got every piece of fish out of here. Now, for one second before we pour that broth over there, let's kind of position our stuff here the way we want so we can see what we have that we want to be seen. We'll get all those big shellfish hanging out up there. Get a couple of shrimp up there. Make sure that lobster tail's sticking out there in their face. Now, let's taste the broth. Now, could I have put fettuccine or something like that in the bottom of this bowl? Yes, I could have. No problem. You certainly should consider all of that. Or serving rice on the side of this even, you know? This needs a little bit of salt. And this needs a little bit of pepper. And of course, only if you want. I think it needs a little bit more butter, so I'm going to put a little bit more butter in here. Some French cooks think it's a crime to put butter in bouillon base because this is supposedly such a provincial dish. But it's evolved to so many different places in so many ways. You get to make it any way you want. All right, but like I stressed earlier when I was putting the assembly together in the beginning, orange, fennel, saffron, tomato, garlic, olive oil. These things need to be in your bouillon base. This is good. So let's start pouring this broth in here. Then we got a bowl of soup. I almost got, I almost got all of it in there. Now, let's just do a little finishing touch on this. Let's garnish it with a little bit of orange because we've got orange in there. This is a big navel orange. Get all that white membrane off of there. Okay, let's get ourselves a couple of slices of orange here. 
looks good. Let's stick that in there by the lobster. How's that? Uh, that's enough orange for me. If you want more orange, put it in. Now, um, I have some toast over here, and we have the Rui, which we have a, a recipe and a video for. It's in the skills section. Um, so, you can serve the Rui, and the Rui is this spicy breadcrumb, red pepperish, olive oil, garlic thing that I made. And um, you can spread it on the bread and garnish this like this. Or you can just put garlic bread on here or plain toast and the Rui alongside on the table. This is probably one of the closest traditional versions of serving a bouillon base with putting the Rui on the bread yourself. But uh, the first and uh, most historically recorded authentic bouillon base was on a plate that was covered with sliced bread. And the Rui was, you know, thrown all over by whoever it was that was eating it if they wanted it. And that's the whole thing about the Rui. It's kind of, if you want it, that's why it's on the side. But I'm, I'm putting it on this bread because I just want to show you another way of administering the Rui into it without leaving it necessarily up to the person. So let's put a little bit of fresh basil on here or whatever you want to put on here. And what do I do with that olive oil container? Bum, bum, bum. Let's put more olive oil. You can't go wrong with that. Not too much. Voila. Mm, I can't wait to shut this camera off because you know what's going to happen to this, don't you? We're eating this immediately. This is, uh, I did the whole thing in about 15 minutes. Uh, with the exception of the Rui that takes a little extra time and I toasted some bread, but didn't take doesn't take that long to make this. And even if it took you a half an hour and you made dinner for two people, that's still pretty quick. So there you have it. John's close to authentic version of bouillabaisse, one of hundreds. Thank you.